Our next speaker is one of the nicest people I've ever had the pleasure to meet. I'm very happy to introduce David Tamayo. All right, uh, so I'm about to prove her wrong. Uh, for those folks that are in the back, I will have, uh, unfortunately, I'm really bad at doing slides, and, and so some of the slides have small letters. I think you'd appreciate reading some of them, so I'd uh, encourage you to move forward. And uh, I'll go ahead and already ask uh, for forgiveness if I pull a Marco Rubio with the water, uh, if I start getting dry mouth. So, uh, we're going to be talking about today about multiculturalism, and it took me about two hours to learn to say that word. It's kind of long-winded for me, but uh, uh, let's get started. Uh, basically, for I'll do a couple of uh, definitions, and that is that uh, the first definition is for multiculturalism is a typically uh, modern phenomenon of, uh, modern, of multi, uh, multiple groups, multiple uh, cultures living in one, in one place, in one society. And that's usually caused by immigration, and we're all familiar with that when you have uh, Little Greece or Chinatown or that kind of stuff. There's also another definition that uh, basically uh, says it's, it's more of a uh, government type of thing. It's public policy that says uh, we want to manage these groups, we want to manage different groups so they can only live together in harmony, we want diversity, equality, jobs, and so on, but that's coming down from the government side uh, through policy. And some of you, I think, might not be near metro stations in, in cities, who knows, and so I figured I'll, I'll, I'll say what a third rail is because it's in the title, and the third rail is in most urban metro systems, is that electric uh, 750 volt uh, rail that if you touch it, you're done. And so for me, it's the third rail because I hope uh, that you guys are too uh, sluggish from lunch to throw anything at me uh, once I'm done. All right, and so the other thing is why am I giving this talk? And well, for one, I'm bicultural. So uh, I came here uh, to this country when I was 12 years old and uh, my family moved up to New England uh, to a uh, Portuguese, uh, little Portugal type of town. So uh, the other thing is uh, I've been told that I, I don't have any white guilt, so I'll say a lot of the things that a lot of white people don't want to say because they feel uncomfortable saying them. And so that's part of the topic that I'll cover. And of course, I'm not afraid of criticism. You know, I have pretty thick skin and people can tell me anything. And actually, I enjoy criticism because I learn uh, from that. But before going on, uh, how many of you consider yourselves Hispanic? All right, we got two that I can see. Oh, five. Okay, we got five, six. All right. Uh, it's good to keep that in mind. So, multiculturalism. Let's talk a little bit about the, the benefits that are touted for this. And, uh, of course, you know, restaurants. Uh, how many of us haven't been to restaurants that we enjoy from other countries? Uh, Kenan Malik, who is an Indian writer, Indian-born writer who lives in uh, London, said, uh, the experience of living in a society transformed by mass immigration, a society that is less insular, more vibrant, more cosmopolitan, is a positive thing to have. So that's, that's the, kind of the premise for that. Uh, but, uh, you know, immigrants, with their cultures, they're also a source of diversity, uh, a source of knowledge, uh, different ways of doing things. Uh, they increase innovation, creativity, prosperity. Uh, I think most people agree that a, na a nation that has all kinds of people is, is always good. Uh, you have all kinds of different foods, traditions, ideas, interests, and, and so forth. Uh, other benefits? that uh, multiculturalism uh, attempts to have is, uh, of course, it's supposed to inspire tolerance and brings together peaceful multicultural freedoms to express one's culture uh, in an acceptable environment. Uh, it reduces fears and misunderstandings of other cultures. It reduces racism, uh, promotes less discrimination, promotes equality. I don't think any of us, none of us would disagree with it, any of these things. Uh, it encourages people to go outside of the country. You learn a lot by visiting other countries. 
And I, I am always encouraging people to visit any other country, even if it's Canada across, you'll see it's, it's very different. Uh, it allows cultures to balance each other out, so that's part of the idea. And you know, after all, the US was founded on the idea of checks and balances. So the idea that you know, not one culture will be the dominant culture. And of course, it gives uh, cultural pride, appreciation, and respect for all the different kinds of cultures. And some will argue uh, America has always been a rich tapestry of cultures. So I think it all sounds pretty nice, pretty good, but there is a paradox. And then here's where the problems start. So multiculturalism assumes that one culture is not better than another culture. It assumes that uh, the, a cultural relativism, that every culture is good to those people from that, those particular cultures. And so if you have a, a group of uh, people from Angola that live together, well, that's good for them and that works out for them. And so who are we to judge another culture? Because we are looking things through the lens of our own culture. So, you know, we really shouldn't be judging another culture because obviously they will look at us and judge us different also. So who are we to judge is kind of the thing, uh, to quote uh, the Pope. So multiculturalism is in itself a value to Western culture. Other cultures are generally not tolerant of other cultures. And so if we insist that all these groups of people from different cultures live together in harmony in this, you know, and all cultures are the same, well, that's a, a Western culture, that's our culture, and now we're imposing our culture on those other cultures, therefore violating our, our own rules. So having a multicultural society as a better choice than one that criticizes cultures, uh, it's, you know, it, it violates our own, our own rules, as I just said. So it's something to think about. That in itself is a culture. As you can see, it's not, it's our, our, this cultural, Western cultural thing is not reflexive. So in order to treat different cultures with equality or any respect, we would have to compare them. So if you tell me we have to treat all these cultures with equal respect and we all have to be, you know, respect everything they do because it's part of their culture, well, now we're going to have to actually compare all these things. And when you compare, you make judgments. Want, whether you want to or not. So, to quote uh, Peter Bogosian, uh, uh, the alleged inability to make reliable judgments about cultural practices has been illegitimately translated into a moral value. So, saying that, that we, don't, we shouldn't judge other cultures, that's immoral, we shouldn't do it. And I think we see that all across in, in our country. When we are in places and we see things that we perhaps don't agree, we say, oh, that's their culture. Let's just leave it. I'm not going to say anything. Now, we already broke that rule for religion. I think most of us have no problems or qualms not respecting the idea of religion. So multiculturalism encourages cultural pride. And for those of you in the back, I will read the quote from uh, one of the best guys in the world, George Carlin. I could never understand ethnic or national pride because to me pride should be reserved for something you achieve or attain on your own, not something that happens by accident of birth. Being Irish isn't a skill, it's a fucking genetic accident. You wouldn't say I'm proud to be 5'11", I'm proud to have a predisposition for colon cancer, so why the fuck would you be proud to be Irish or proud to be Italian or American or anything? So his point is, is that we should, we, don't, we shouldn't be proud of the things that we can't change. Saying, saying uh, I'm proud to be uh, brown, I'm proud to be a, a, a certain race, uh, doesn't mean anything because you really had no choice. Uh, saying proud to be a woman, proud to be a man, proud to be homosexual, doesn't make sense. Uh, but multiculturalism encourages pride for something that was quite accidental. You know, people are usually born into these cultures and they follow them because where, where they were born. Uh, multiculturalism also asserts that all differences in cultures are equivalent and we should take pride into them. Unless, of course, it's Eurocentric or maybe you're white. 
If you're white, you're not allowed to uh, take pride in anything. So, <laughs> well, multi, so multiculturalism says that we have to be tolerant of all the cultures. And tolerance of ideas is anti-skeptic. We're in a skeptical conference. And I'm saying if you have to tolerate stuff, you know, just because, and that, and that stuff is ideas, then you're not being a skeptic. So, because it prevents questioning. So we need to question everything. In a postmodern world, tolerance says it's good to be inclusive and accepting of all cultures, regardless of what they do. And that's the part that we shouldn't accept. Okay? Tolerance, tolerant, means we cannot be judgmental of a culture. And what this does is it encourages self-censorship. People stop doing things just because, oh, I don't want to get in trouble, I don't want to uh, uh, offend somebody, you know, that kind of thing. Anything that is an idea needs to be questioned. And it could be that a degree of tolerance at a certain moment, at a certain period of time, in a certain situation, might reduce tensions, it might allow you know, uh, time for dialogue, but at the end it usually doesn't help for the search of truth, whatever that truth might be, and fairly often validates bad behavior. So that's something to, uh, to keep in mind. And then, of course, there's the tolerance of the intolerable that is not really tolerance, it's, it's just approval. And that, of course, we're talking about misogynistic behaviors, anti-science views, irrational things that a lot of cultures bring with themselves. And so, at best, tolerance fosters a, an indifference uh, towards things that are wrong or things that should be questioned. And for instance, how many of you, you remember uh, when uh, uh, Terry, somebody was burning uh, the Koran? He was within his right to do that. Our laws and our culture says burning a book doesn't do anything. But, you know, he was yelled at and told that he was intolerant, that he was offensive, that he needed not to do that, and so on and so forth. So that's when you start seeing that things are creeping into our own culture from other cultures that shouldn't be. I mean, our, our Western culture values those things. Now, don't think that this is just with the Muslims. or this, uh, Some of you may not see that picture, but what it is is a picture in New York City in Hebrew uh, that says uh, it orders women to step aside if a man is coming because the Hasidic Jews, that's what they do. Now, fortunately, that, uh, that sign, uh, I was one of the sh many people, I'm sure, that uh, requested the city of New York to remove that sign, and they removed about 30 of those signs that were all over the neighborhood there. Uh, so this is not just a, a Muslim problem or you know, a particular group. Uh, these uh, Hasidic Jews have been in, in this country for many, many, many years, but again, it's an enclosed society. They haven't really been assimilated in, in general. Uh, cultures, so a culture is a set of ideas. Okay, I think we can agree on that. And some things really don't matter. Now, music and food and you know, dancing and things like that, those are kind of nice things. And whether you like vanilla or chocolate or pistachio ice cream, everybody's right. And when it comes to dancing, if you like salsa or rock or whatever, same thing, everybody's right. So there are certain things that don't matter, and in fact add value to any culture. But some ideas, technologies, political systems, and so on, are better than others. Okay, notice I put better, because I haven't defined what better is. Now, a better culture, in my opinion, is a, is a culture that is more just, more free, more enlightened, more conducive to human progress, more conducive to change, so, what do we mean by better? By better we mean the idea that culture is the capacity for groups to change in a social way, moral, technological, political, traditional behaviors, etc. And some may not be a big deal, but it doesn't mean you can't improve. And, and I put an example there. If you ever get invited to a Latino party and, it's, and they tell you, come at seven, and you do, you'll find everybody in underwear. So, know that. And, and there are little things that don't matter much. Uh, for instance, uh, for some reason, Latino mothers tend to point with their lips a lot for some reason. Uh, Mom, where's my shirt? Over there. You know, and, and it's not because they're holding things or something. Little things like that don't really matter. 
but you know, we need to be we need to be questioning the things that do matter, the things that threaten our own Western culture of freedom uh, and, and the, those things that we value. Uh, so, uh, again, to quote uh, Peter, uh, the attempt to shield ideas from contemplation, discussion, investigation, or criticism should be considered logical fallacies. So, multiculturalism is not a left or a right wing idea. Okay, critics of other cultures are often characterized as racist. And this is wrong. If you see that, call it a, for what it is. No one chooses his or her race. So if someone is being racist, fine, that is bad. But, you know, if you, if you uh, are criticizing a culture, how often have we heard, oh, Islamophobia, uh, you are being racist against Muslims because you're criticizing Islam. It's, you know, it's BS. Uh, and because of this multiculturalism, in, especially in our country, where a lot of our politicians, especially, are very soft and they don't like to say a lot of things, well, for the last few years, many of you know that the UN has been trying, at the urging of uh, a lot of the Arab countries, to declare uh, laws against the defamation of religion. And religion is an idea, a set of ideas, uh, flawed ideas, but ideas nonetheless. So that's you know, some of the things that can come about multiculturalism. The idea of equality is historically something that we got from the Age of Enlightenment. It's, it's European, Western in that sense. And, and it's, we should be proud of that because I, I sincerely think it's, it's made the world a better place today. A lot of the countries in the world that, where democracy has broken out, it has a lot to do with these Western values that we got you know, originally from the Greeks. And of course, there are some, uh, like Kant, that will argue that there are some universal values that can be deduced through reason and that they should be part of the culture. And what does that mean? That means that we should always reject the idea when someone in a discussion says to you, well, this is true for me. It may not be true for you, but it's true for me. Well, that's bullshit. There's only one truth, and we need to figure out how to get to that truth. And uh, so, uh, and, and this came about, in fact, about a week ago. Uh, we were doing a, an interview of a Muslim woman uh, for our podcast, and that, she used that phrase several times. Well, that's, that's what's true for me. You have different truths. So hate speech is something that uh, we want to talk about. Multiculturalism contribu contributed to the confusion of extending immutable properties of people, such as race, gender, sexual orientation, et cetera, et cetera to all epistemic systems, epistemic, big word there, and ways of knowing, cultures, uh, faith traditions, local myths, etc. So it took something that is for people and started putting it on traditions and things that are on culture, basically. And that's what we need to make sure that when we see it, we call it for what it is. Cultures, again, ideas, that's when anytime you see the word culture, you're seeing ideas, have no dignity just like religion, has no dignity. So criticizing culture is not hate speech. And if you see somebody saying, oh, there, here's hate speech, or you're being hateful, you need to clarify that. And how many of us have seen the ophobia thing, you know? Uh, again, just because you put ophobia and make it sound all technical and uh, med medicinal, it doesn't mean that it's, uh, that it's real or that it, it's actually the case. So, by criticizing a culture, most people fear to be seen as insensitive, as enraged, cruel, intolerable, nasty, offensive, and just plain wicked. And this is typical of today's political correctness. We see it a lot with politicians. We see it a lot of people that don't want to offend. And so they'd rather sacrifice you know, our style of living than, than actually step up and say, no, this is wrong. I like that quote from Voltaire, one of my uh, favorite philosophers, of course, to learn who rules over you, simply find out who you are not allowed to criticize. So are some cultures better than others? I mean, if you remember at the beginning, it said, no, some culture, old cultures are basically the same. Well, I'm calling bullshit on that. Uh, that picture that you see on your left is, the, uh, uh, is, the, uh, is from an honor killing here in the United States a young lady that was run over by her father because she had become too Americanized. And the one in the right was given to me uh, last year uh, about a curandero. Uh, curandero is a, is a healer using herbs and using magic and, and uh, witch doctor of sorts. 
uh, and there is a, there's a convention of these curanderos in New Mexico, and this was uh, last year. So uh, I'm not sure if it's every year, but uh, it certainly sounded like, oh, gee, here we go. Uh, and it's being sponsored by, by a university, by the way. So assumption that all cultures are equally good and should be respected, bullshit, okay? What does that mean? Well, non-science-based medicine, the curanderos that I just talked about, Eastern medicine and things that are postmodern labeled as local knowledge or other ways of knowing, you know, that kind of, that's bubble, that, that, that's pure nothing. Uh, Afrocentrism, there's some people that claim that Egypt was ruled by a black race that gave rise to the Greco-Roman civilization and so on and so forth. DNA, DNA says no. Uh, Native American woo, you know, the crystal healing, the plastic shamans and, and, and so forth. And then of course, you know, when you see the word holistic, intuitive, it's natural. Of course, Deepak Chopra, 100%. Anytime he's associated, the big BS uh, should, uh, flag should come up. And then, you know, all the chains of prayer, sometimes your friends put in Facebook, oh, pray for my nephew, or if, you, if we receive 20,000 prayers, this little kid will walk, or some other BS. And the more strict stuff, you know, honor killings, child genital mutilations, which takes place in this country, uh, animal tor torture, uh, in the name of religion and culture, such as Hil uh, Hilal, is that how you say? Hilal, kosher, and Santeria, they sacrifice animals in, most, in the most horrific and, and cruel way. So, again, are cultures better than others? Well, our culture permits criticism. I see a lot of, a lot of young people here that might not be aware. A few years ago, that cartoon that you see in uh, uh, a depiction of the prof uh, Prophet Muhammad, uh, with a bomb in, in his head and in the right saying, stop, stop, we run out of virgins. Uh, that created a huge, that was published in, in Denmark and it created a huge brouhaha. Hundreds of people were hurt, some people were killed, uh, embassies were sacked uh, in other countries, not even the country where it was. So the freedom of press in one country was seen as something bad in another country. And now when, when uh, New York Times and other newspapers in here wanted to report on the story, most of them did not put the picture because they were afraid. And so self-censoring, and we can't, we can't be having that. Cultural ideas that women are inferior versus personal freedoms that we have in the West. I mean, these are the things that we need to compare and the freedom to satirize all ideas, including political, religious, and cultural ideas. Those are the things that we have from our Western culture and things that we should uh, push for. Now, what we want to do is criticize the process. We want to criticize the uh, culture and so we can cr criticize the, the jihad uh, as an example and, uh, and that is not the same thing as criticizing the person. So we just have to make sure that that's the case and that people know this and we need to teach people how to do this. So they don't, be, they don't think that they're being attacked personally. Now, let's take a quick moment, take a uh, look at multiculturalism as a government policy. So in 1995, many of you remember that Quebec tried to secede Canada for the second time and they had 50.58 votes for no and 49.42 voting yes. I don't know, I read those numbers and I said, half the people really, really don't want to be there. I mean, for you to want to secede a country, you really have to be very, very unhappy. And, uh, and so the reasons that were given as to why they wanted to secede so badly, that they almost made it. The first one is language, French versus English. So they have two worlds. If any of you that have played with Canadian money, you see it's all bilingual, everything's in two languages. Okay, you have two cultures. You have one that is more socialist, more pro-union, more and so on, and the other one uh, that is not. Uh, Quebec fears losing the, their French culture. So, ironic, isn't it? Quebec is not afraid of losing its Quebecian culture or its Canadian culture. They want, they want to make sure they don't lose a foreign culture that they have. And so, again, it just doesn't seem that logical. Religion, of course. Catholics versus Protestants, which, yeah, we've seen that in England a few times. Uh, and one claims that, that one is more pro-business, the other one is more pro-culture. Uh, the two systems are very expensive to maintain because everything has to be in two languages, everything has to be translated, and so you're kind of doing double work for everything. And you've heard the expression, things are lost in translation. 
it, it, it does happen, you know. Uh, now let's, not, let's come here to our own country. Since 2007, 22 Americans of Somali descent have gone to Somalia to fight, and some, be, uh, some became terrorists. Now, these are kids that were born in the United States, in the United States, but never saw themselves as Americans for some reason. And that is not good. And this is because they lived in an isolated area, poor neighborhood of, of immigrants of Somali descent. They saw themselves as Somalis. Now, I personally was, was raised in, in, in a similar neighborhood. My parents moved to a Portuguese neighborhood in, in New England. My father has been here for 40 years in this country and doesn't speak a word of English. He speaks Portuguese like a native, like he's from Lisboa. And I learned Portuguese because of that, but the way was to get out. And we, you know, I, I went out, my siblings went out, and it, it was the way, you know, having these encla enclaves of different cultures might be good to go have a great meal, but uh, overall doesn't help uh, to have a better country. Now, not just here, but France, you remember in 2005, the young Muslim riots uh, that they had there burning cars for many, many days. These were, again, these were Muslim French kids born and raised in France who did not feel they were French. They didn't, they didn't identify with the French culture. This year, same thing, riots in Sweden. Again, ethnic neighborhoods uh, going rioting uh, because they, feel, they don't feel part of that country. Now, within the last 12 months, leaders uh, in uh, the UK, Germany, and France have declared multiculturalism as a policy, a failure in their countries. In other words, they say, look, uh, we're trying to t let everybody know that it's okay to be this, it's okay to be that, but really it's not the best thing for the country because what you lose that unity as a country. You, you no longer think similarly and, and you just, you waste a lot of time in infighting and in not communicating, being able to communicate with each other. Now, many of you know that in, in England today, uh, they have Sharia law arbitra arbitration courts. And uh, don't think that it won't happen in this country because arbitration is an agreement by two parties selecting somebody to uh, arbitrate their problem. And in, the, in the England, they have done that with, with Sharia and the Sharia law. And so a lot of the women are strongly encouraged to go to the Sharia court instead of the regular courts when they're having uh, problems at home. Uh, again, for the ones that are in the back, I'll read the, the quote uh, from uh, Thomas uh, Sowell, who's a senior fellow at, at the uh, Hoover Institution in Stanford University. What multiculturalism boils down to is that you can praise any culture in the world except Western culture, and you cannot blame any culture in the world except Western culture. And, uh, and really, the, what we're talking about here is the multiculturalism in different societies that have so many immigrants are, uh, encourages segregation. It says it's okay to be segregated. It's okay to form groups and enclaves. It views humans as having to live with a specific culture, which is to deny the capacity to transform and improve their condition. Now, culture is no different than religion in that both are often accepted as blind forms of behavior under the way of tradition. So, I mean, think about that for a second. Religion and, and culture are really, one is a subset of the other, I suppose. Uh, religion can be considered a subset of, of the culture. Now, cultures can evolve. Creating an American culture that takes the best of all cultures, you know, is a better way than having many segregated groups, like, you know, little Italy, little this, little that. But as skeptics, we need to ask ourselves, why should I, as a skeptic, be expected to show respect for Christian, Islamic, Jewish, or any other supernatural cultural ideas whose views I find appalling? How can I respect homophobic, misogyni I can't say the word, misogynistic, and backwards ways of thinking without disrespecting my own Western culture? And what's wrong with wishing some of those terrible cultural things away? I think it's what we should be striving for. So, don't get me wrong, I think diversity is important, not in uh, and of itself, but because it allows the expansion of horizons to compare and contrast different lifestyles and principles in helping us create universal values and to form a collective language of rational, is the key word, rational citizenship. So, am I a hypocrite? 
I'm the founder of Hispanic American Freethinkers. Oh, an ethnic group. So let me tell you a little bit. The goal of Hispanic American Freethinkers is to encourage and help integrate Hispanics or Latinos, whichever you want to refer them to, into a secular culture. Okay? It's a, a culture of secularism, which I consider an American culture. Uh, promotes, so Halfrey promotes education in science, skepticism, and secular humanism, again, part of American and Western culture. And uh, Hispanic American Freethinkers promotes a culture of recent critical thinking and the American cultural value of church-state separation, which lacks in a lot of our countries. So, and all the meetings, all the official meetings and all the business is done in English as the uh, language that we consider to be the, the common language for all the groups in this country. Okay, and the main goal of Hafri, to no longer be needed. So when we can call ourselves Americans instead of Hispanic Americans or this or African Americans or Korean Americans or anything like that, then we have succeeded. The idea is that we're all Americans, we're all in the same place, we're all enjoying the same freedoms and same problems and when we have a hurricane it affects us all the same. So, you know, that's the main goal of Hispanic American free thinkers, a more secular uh, society where we're all Americans. Now, why Hispanics? Well, real quick, I'll just point out that there are 53 million Latinos in the United States today. That's a lot of people. Uh, that means that one in six people uh, are Hispanic, and I bet you they got better representation in the churches than they have here today from what we saw. Okay, one in four kids today, 25% of the kids today in this country uh, call themselves Hispanic. And tomorrow, you know, we have, uh, uh, according to the census, by 2060, one in three Americans will be Latino. Well, what I want is by 2060, three in three Americans to be Americans, regardless of what they are. Uh, with a culture, <laughs> with a culture that is unique to Americans, that is based on reason, that is based on, on critical thought, that is based on compassion and, and humanistic uh, uh, ideals. Now, Hispanics have about 100 subcultures within, within the Hispanic community, so, you know, that's uh, a big number of people to deal with, and trust me, the churches are after each one of them. So, conclusion. It, trying to be politically correct can be a problem, because on the one hand, from a feminist, you know, we want more feminism, so we want to show feminist ideals to the, to say, the Arab countries, uh, so that women there can enjoy more freedoms. But at the same time, if we are multiculturalists, well, you know, we we need to tolerate the the misogynistic uh, ideals that they have in their fundamentalism. So basically, we can't have it both ways. It's one or the other. And if we're not doing the feminist side in this example, then we're, we're promoting and helping the other side. So now, we've seen that multiculturalism as a government policy has shown to be a failure. Creation of a multicultural society at the expense of a more progressive culture is doomed to fail because, you know, we're just gonna go back. Now, some of you that are history buffs might know that the Greeks came up with all what we, what we call here Western thought, democracy, republic, all of that. The Greek had all of this stuff. And then for, I don't know, 1,200 years or so, the Dark Ages, that stuff disappeared. Christianity tried to destroy it all. And ironically, it was thanks to the Muslims that most of that uh, philosophy and most of the, those ideas survived and came back to Europe again. That, and that helped fuel the, uh, the, the uh, Age of Enlightenment. And, uh, I'm afraid that if we become multiculturalist in the sense that I've explained over here, that someday in the future we may end up seeing the same thing. So we've seen a step back. I mean, we saw it in Iran in 1979. And uh, we can't assume that, that we can't stop moving forward in secularism. The secularism movement has grown and has been because of the effort of a lot of great people that have volunteered tons and tons of time for this. Now, remember, it's equality of human beings not equality of cultures. It's simple to look at cultures and compare and say, well, this is better than this, and this ideal is better than that ideal. It's no different than, than when we evaluate our own culture. I mean, 
Who today can argue that we don't have a better culture today than we did in 1955? When it comes to race handling, when it comes to uh, gays, when it comes to just about anything socially, we've, pr we've moved forward as a country. And uh, you know, we need to keep doing that. Now, remember, cultural relativism is akin to moral relativism. And moral values are not relativistic, and neither is culture. There is some cultures better than others. Now, shades of gray. I put 50 because of the book, but anyway. It's just, I might, might wake up somebody that say, oh yeah, I read that book. So some of the arguments that I have with fellow immigrants is this, I, you know, most immigrants move to a new country because they, they want a much better life, uh, they often admire the success of that country, and you know, they see the, the, uh, the culture and they say, wow, those Americans, or those Europeans, or those French, or whatever. But then I notice a lot of them, they go to those countries and they try to turn that country into the country that they left. They try to do business the way they did business in the old country. And I tell them, I said, well, wait a minute, but if you, you left the old country because it sucked, and now you're trying to turn this place into the place that sucked, I, I don't get it. Why are you doing that? Now, there's a lot of psychology behind that, of course. You know, people are insecure. It's something that they're holding on to so they don't feel totally out of place. And it applies more to the older people than it does to the young people. The young people are easier to adopt. They learn the language and customs a lot faster, unless they're insulated in communities. Now, that, uh, this applies to all kinds of cultures. In the Washington, D.C. area, they were doing, uh, they used to have the projects where they would have all the poor people that are on house, you know, government housing all together. And, and, it, and there was this cycle of, of repetitive uh, uh, poverty what they decided to do is tear all those things down and now put people, anytime there's a new neighborhood, they put one or two houses uh, of assisted living there and, and so forth all over and they realize that poverty started you know, being solved. But when you put everybody together, it kind of feeds on itself and, and they don't come out. So whether there's a, cul a culture of poverty, a culture of uh, immigrants, a culture of any type. Uh, so education is the key to everything, it's, it's really learning and learning, and it's up to us. If we wanna see a better country, it's not up to the educators. We are all educators, this is all our country. We care about what this country does and doesn't do. So we need to educate anytime we get that chance, whether it's a friend, whether it's a parent, whether it's a, a relative, a friend, or even a stranger. Now, multiculturalism is a policy that doesn't help immigrants, in my opinion. Without language, understanding, without a way of adapting to a new culture, they can't get better jobs and they can't be part of the nation and they feel that they're being taken advantage of. We see this in, in many places in many countries. So what I suggest is that integration be the key thing to multiculturalism. It doesn't have to be shock therapy. It can be you know, providing many ways and encouragements for people to learn the language. Uh, I'm a product of the bilingual program where I was put in a bilingual class for a year until I learned enough English to go to class with the mainstream kids. Uh, and and uh, having, uh, you can still have all the races and all the things, you know, living together and respecting those things, but they will learn the culture, that our culture says it's okay to be gay, it's okay to, to do this or do that, and it's not okay to do these other things. That way we get people to integrate. And again, if they came here, it must be, there must have been a good reason. Uh, we need to develop a new American culture based on reason, skepticism, and critical thinking. I don't think that's any new to us, considering the groups that we see around and people yelling outside. But, uh, you know, cultural is, is ever-changing. And so we need to learn from these other cultures the good stuff and, you know, reject the bad stuff. And I tell people, look, you can still speak your own language, you can still eat your own foods, you can still do any you know, crazy things you want to do if you want, but it's at, at home. You take your, that multiculturalism at home and you understand that you live in a community and you live in this. And, and in fact, that's what the Hasidic Jews uh, have done. They, they have a culture and everything, but they are able to interact with the outside world. Fairly often, a lot of these cult subcultures uh, are not able to do so. And again, I, I don't have to say this, courtesy and truth need not be strangers. So, this is my last slide, and you guys are gonna be off the hook soon. A plug, of course. So Hispanic American Free Thinkers is doing a, a documentary film, on. Uh, we're trying to show all the different things that the Hispanics believe in, superstitions and things like that, and how they negatively affect them as a, a, as a group, and why we need to move away from, from this. And, uh, 
so it's an educational film uh, that, we're, that we're doing. Uh, and I'm going to enroll all of you to assist, uh, to assist us in doing this. And that's to keep your eyes and ears open if you see anything weird uh, with, uh, in, with Hispanic groups or anything that I should know about it relating to that. Let me know. Remember, I have 50, the best way to reach those uh, 53 million Hispanics that I told you about uh, in a couple of slides back is it, the easiest way is through film. Because trust me, I've tried everything. I've tried the websites, the Facebook, going to neighborhoods, doing the good deeds, the going, you know, uh, doing the debates, doing all those things. You're, you're working minuscule, but with a film, it's going to be a lot easier to reach a lot more people. The film is going to be uh, with, with subtitles, depending on the, the subtitles will be in the language opposite of whatever, whoever is speaking. So if someone's speaking Spanish, it'll be in English and vice versa. Uh, we're also looking for a good title for the film. So if you're creative and you don't expect any pay, <laughs> let, let me know. Uh, and uh, we expect to complete uh, the film by uh, 2014. Again, if you know of anything, even if it's not in the, your neck of the woods, please look me up, send me an email or whatever. We'll, we'll try to, uh, to go do it. And of course, money. Uh, we are a 501c3. And for instance, this is one of the things that we're going to be putting in the film. Uh, we're trying to arrange that right now. And this is a human, sac uh, uh, human. <laughs> Freudian slip. A uh, animal sacrifice in uh, Florida, in uh, Hialeah, Florida, where uh, Santeria Church went to court uh, and won the right to sacrifice animals in the most gruesome uh, and painful way that they could do uh, under re freedom of religion. And so if we educate people and show them some of these brutalities, uh, then perhaps we'll be able to start changing our culture to a better culture, an American secular culture. That's all I have. Thank you very much. <laughs>